Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hookalo TV, located at www.humancolony.org. Today's date is August 22nd, 2015. You can find today's event at the Human Colony website on Google Plus events and the Google Plus chat boxes that the Hookalo members use. Um, today's webinar. We have Kim and we have Max today. Kim will begin channeling first, Max will channel second. From what I understand, um, our guests in the room today are Barbara and Douglas and Johannes and Caitlin and Karen and Roxanne and Shron, Max, of course, hey. and Kim and Rowie and myself. Um, I don't know what else to say right at the minute. I kind of get to this point and I just draw a little blank. It just goes, blah, I'm present. How about that? So um, I think we'll uh, we'll bring Kim up. And um, Kim, if you want to say a little something for those that uh, that don't know you and maybe say hey and uh, and we'll go on from there. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim. Uh, I come from the Hukula community. Um, I've been a member now for a year and a half. Uh, I've been channeling for about the last six months. I do do private sessions and I meet wonderful people and it's lovely interaction time. Um, my I can be contacted via the humancolony.org website. There's a link on the left that says Sessions with Kim. And all the instructions on how to reach me are there. Um, we might have a surprise for tonight who's going to come through. Uh, and we love you always. We hope you're having a wonderful time. And Sabrina, we miss you. And thank you to Dan and to Rowie for helping out as always. So I guess I shall get in my little position. And uh, give me a minute. I'll see you soon. All right. See you in a moment. Blessings, everyone. This is Endu. Hello, Endu. How are you today? Very well, thank you, my friend. How are you? I'm good. This is Guru Dan. It's been a while since our last visit. Yes, Dan. How are you doing? I am doing okay today. Wonderful. Wonderful. And how is everybody else? I believe we have guests. There are a lot of guests. We have some members here in the room. We have some members online on the YouTube page. And then we have uh, viewers that will come and uh, watch the YouTube uh, message later. So uh, lots and lots of people Great. around. Love to all. Do you uh, have something you wanted to share, the reason why you've come? Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to actually ask the membership a question. Okay, Young what might remember <laughs> the events and the visitations to the crystal rooms? Why are these requests not being made at the moment? Can somebody share with me that idea? Please give me the exchange. I would like the information. I'm not sure. People are not aware. I, I think that's probably the main reason is people are not aware of the crystal rooms. Could you explain and elaborate more about that so they can yes. become aware? My pleasure. Yes, thank you, Dad. 
is the Crystal Room, my friends. Initially, it was known as the Crystal Room. It was the perfect name for it. The layout of the Crystal Room is actually a symmetrical room. It has entries from different sections of the symmetrical circle. Now, each entry reads the vibration and reads the aura color of the fields of the being about to enter. Now, <laughs> very difficult to leave once you enter. For humans, it is very complex. They may not stay longer than 15 minutes. If they do, <laughs> the result <laughs> would be quite easy. And that's fine. We do watch very closely. Now, Colony 5, what you know is Colony 5. And it has the original crystal room on it. And there was great interest in the crystal room and humans were coming and we were having great success. They were entering through doors where they were experiencing grief. They were entering through doors where they were experiencing great love. It was not always necessary to visit for what you might call a sorrowful reason. People came to enjoy. People came for excitement. People came to enhance. It became very popular. The requests were offered. The visitations were regular. And suddenly, the requests stopped. Now, can I share with you, at the time that there was high demand for visitation to the crystal wounds, we decided we would gift the humans with smaller ships, pods, designed in a different way, yet for the same purpose, could read your auric fields, could read your vibration as you entered, so you could enter by the correct door. For you to have an experience that would be very powerful for you. Healing was one thing people came for. So this effort was made. There was actually six smaller pods made and they hover around your planet. Yet they have not been called upon. So I would like to say to you, understood there are new membership in Hugo, I am told. I would like to encourage you all to make requests to visit the crystal room. To come out joyful, to come out happy, to come out full of love and wonder why you are waking in the morning and feeling so fabulous. So yes, that's my message to wonderful humankind. Please come and use our crystal room. Andy, I'd just like to um, show my gratitude for coming along today. I think an answer to that would be many people were excited by the uh, the idea of site to site transfer. This seems to take over the yes. idea of the crystal rooms. But just for uh, the new and older members of Hucolo, would you like to just give a quick introduction of actually who you are and the and what you certainly. do within Kirkwood Mirror. Yes, yes, certainly. You would know me as Palladium. I have visited with, visited with you before via channeling with Kim. I exist, I live on a ship that was called in. Essentially, we were a backup ship. Already, our race was here, our species was here. Our job to provide energy for Gaia. The weather, your concerns about the disasters and the tragedies going on around your planet, we were called in. We are greatly energetic beings. The first ship came as the tragedies began and they were able to minimize much. So it is difficult to measure, of course. What do you have to compare it to? There is no reference point. Let me reassure you that they were minimized, they continue to be. Now, they escalated. The tragedies escalated. Guy needed more help. So, my ship came. Now, I was chosen. We are all youthful. We are all playful. And the ones of us on the second ship that came, there is 3,028 of us. 
were all selected for our ability to generate energy. Now some were born that way, just as they are with you. Myself, I was trained, and yes, I was accepted to come on the ship to help to heal Gaia. And as seems to be the pattern, as various species come to Earth, and they embrace the humans, they become fond of them. Many of you have been teachers to many of us players on the ships. When you hear the random questions, perhaps on why do you use what you call a dishwasher? When you hear these random questions, please answer. You're building a relationship and you're teaching. So just acknowledge them and give the answer. What may come, what may follow after that, may be very blissful. So yes, we are playful. We have time to play. We have time to visit. We have time to observe. And when it's time for us to work, to deliver our love, to deliver our energy to your wonderful planet, to yourselves as well now. We congregate, we gather in mass, two ships now, remember two ships now, we congregate, we meditate, we generate energy, we multiply it off each other, we multiply it off the exterior of the worlds, where we are sitting, we do not sit in the lotus position, no, it is not as you would imagine. We sit comfortably because comfort generates the greatest energy. So, collectively, we create energy and then we deliver it. We deliver it, my friends. We deliver it in a great way. And it goes to the core of your guy. Now, we may direct it at times where it is needed more. Certainly. This is something that the elders worry about. We do not have to. This is why sometimes we may be mysterious. It is much fun. I'm very pleased that I volunteered to come and I'm very pleased to see the results. And I'm grateful to interact with you today. Does anyone have any questions? We do have, we do have uh, uh, one question, one question from, member from member Michelle Euro. Euro. Yes. She would, she would, she would like she to would ask like if there's any messages for her. for her. Yes. May I ask, where would you like the messages from? Uh, from, uh, spirit from Spirit or whatever or information you have that you're connected, you're connected to. to? Yes. Yeah, so I may address this at an energetic level, yes. Michelle Euro, correct? Yes. 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 The Lady of Laughter. She has great brightness about her. Her energy is very powerful also. As a human being, <clears throat> as a human being on the planet, she is of great help when she meditates with her intention to assist the planet. So Michelle, I would say to you, please continue. You support us in our efforts and we thank you. And Gaia loves you. And Gaia thanks you. Watch how Gaia embraces you. Embrace the God. Yes, Michelle, you're wonderful. Use your energy. Assist your planet. And we should play. Is there anything else? We have a new member today. His name is Taylor, and he's a bit shy at the minute, and this is his very first oh, Saturday man. webinar. Taylor. And so I'd like, to, I'd like to ask the same question for him. Do you have any information that you could give him as a you know, brand new Hukalo member of um, something that, uh, that will help him come along? Yes. Why is he shy? He does not need it's to. My, 
Right. It's my it's first time you know, having experiences, but I'm excited. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So Yes, my friend. Bless <laughs> yourself be. For you sure. Are Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Let yourself be. Let yourself be. Let yourself be happy. Let yourself be romantic. I'm a great romantic. <sighs> <laughs> Awesome. Let yourself be a romantic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for speaking up. Please, remove shy from your vocabulary. There is no need. Awesome. Can I ask one question for my friend Kumar? Yes. If there are any messages for my friend Kumar, he asked me last week if I could ask for him. Kumar? Kumar, it's his uh, nickname. Uh, his uh, real name is uh, Joseph. Kumar. <laughs> mm, I like the sound of that name. Yes. Kumar. Please ask him to unbox himself. Please ask him to take him outside of the box that he contains himself in. He does not belong in a container. He belongs out in the world having his needs fulfilled and living life to the fullest. There is my message. Any romantics? Are there any romantics here? What do you mean by romantics? The ones who are wondering what the what's going to go on with them next in their relationships. <laughs> it may well be that, yes. But let's talk about the seductive side of the humans. Well, then I have a question, then. What can you tell me about the brown-haired girl? Is, she's, is yeah. she coming soon, or what's the deal with that? And is it the light brown hair or the dark brown hair? Because there seem to be several timelines converging, so now I'm curious. Then the romantic in you, if you allow the romantic in you to come out, my friends, you shall have a light brunette head lady and a dark blue head lady. Right? That would be interesting. I don't know if I could juggle that or not. How much fun. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Be honest. I would advise you be honest. Have fun. Share the love. Be romantic. That does sound like fun. Let me uh, let me dwell on that a little bit. Put some manifestation <laughs> power on that. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> Please do. Yes. Focus on your romance. Focus on your love. Focus on your seduction. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Our our member friend Sarah wants to know if you have any messages for her as well, if you have any information you can can offer. Yes. Yes, Sarah. Dance, my love. Dance. <laughs> I dance often with Kim. It is awesome. My friends, may I share this with you? There is an experience named channel dancing. Okay, it's self-explanatory. That's a given. It is a very effective way for you to perhaps begin to channel, to allow an entity to enter into you, a pure one, that will enjoy the dance. That you, and as if there is a partner, you dance together, yet you are as one. Now, this is a very effective way to understand the process of channeling. You have the vibration of another being that you allow to use the limbs of your body. You vibrate with the music. It is wonderful exercise. Sarah, my darling, dance. Dance the romance. That is the myth. I wish her joy. I wish her love. And I wish her romance. Death. What a wonderful message. Thank you. We have another member, uh, Jasmina, 
I was wondering if you have any messages for her. Jasmina. Jasmina, my friend. You already entertain. It is wonderful what you share. The voice of an angel. Dance one. Be one. Open up. Open up. Open up to the joy. Open up to the love. To the fun. To the wonderful human side of romance. My goodness, I cannot tell you how attractive that is. I will advocate romance from this day forward. Thank you to the humans. Please, Jasmina, my darling, dance and romance also. You have goddesses within each of you. You have gods within each of you, but guess what? You dance, you are both. So be Jasmina. I would also suggest to you, my dear sweet friend, Watch some burlesque. Learn burlesque. Sit up. Watch burlesque. That is my message. Thank you. We have another member, David. David um, wants to know if you can describe um, your people, your civilization, a little bit. Um, a little bit more uh, detail about um, yes. your experience there. Yes. The reason I address you and introduce myself as you would know me as Palladian is because predominantly that's how I look. Humans judge by appearances. This is why many species do. We look humanoid. We actually do come from stars and planets. Myself, I tend to hang out around stuff. I, but this, it is classic Palladian information that most, most of you know. We have a history, a history that ties us back right to the beginnings of your planet, just as you all do, each of you. You all have beginnings on this planet. Yes. A Palladian experience, it is a higher dimension, yes. We still learn. We are humanoid, as I said, we appear humanoid. If we were to walk down your street, perhaps if you are aware of us, you might look twice. Most likely, no, you would not. It is very interesting when we have visitors who astral travel and they come on our ship. <laughs> If any human ever wishes to experience the idea of being a celebrity and having a fan club, please come and visit. There are many of us who absolutely find the humans delicious. So please, men, ladies, come visit us. Come and find out. Come and ask us. And go via the crystal. We will show you our museums. We will show our history on the ship, what we embrace, what we treasure, and we treasure you. We have relics of your past and your history. We have relics of many planets. We have traveled through galaxies, not all. We have traveled. At the moment, our journey is to support you and your wonderful Planet. Did you know? Did you know? Gaia is a very sensual energy. Did you know that? You may hug your trees. People do. They hug you back. It's a very sensual experience. You feel it. You feel the bark of the tree. Lean your body up against the tree. Feel it. Essential. Yeah. Ecstasy. Find it. Seek it. David. Hug a tree, my friend.
That's very good. Thank you. Um, have a message or a, a question from our friend Gabriel over in Sweden, and uh, yeah. he'd like he'd yeah. like. He'd like to know if you have a message for him, and he's also uh, curious about um, any information that you can tell him about his dreams. I guess he's looking for some clarity on something that maybe you can help him out. Yeah. Gabriel. Gabriel, Sweden. Yes. Young man. Where is the lady friend, all the men friend in your life? Your dreams. Your dreams at times, they appear very clear to you. You hold on to them. You look to understand them. Wonderful. Sometimes it's okay to let them go. Let things go. Let things be, let things flow. Enjoy. Enjoy what you have. Yes, your dreams are important. They are part of you. The ones you do not understand as yet, let them go. They will reflect to you in another way. Come to the crystal runes. Gabriel, you have been to the crystal runes before. Come to the crystal rooms for further understanding. Please. I'm serious at this point. Please come to the crystal room. Beyond that, all will be well. Yeah, he said he was one of the first in the crystal rooms, but I don't know when his last visit was, but uh, I'll yes. pass that information it along. It has been a while, my friend. It has been a while. The request simply just stopped. They died off. The energy flowed away. So I bring you a reminder. Take yourselves on an adventure. Can we join as a group in the crystal room, or is it just an individual experience? It is not preferable to come in a group. The reason being that for each who enter, there is a very specific reason why they come. And this is why there are different doors around the pod. It depends on the perception of you when you arrive as to which door you will enter. So more than one at a time, unless you are coming as a partnership, unless you are coming as a romantic couple. It is preferable to enter the room alone. To have your experience while you are there. No, you are being guided. Do not fear that you will be left in there for too long. We have seen the fallout. It is not permanent. However, it can be mystifying. Some have been asked if they are intoxicated after they have been to the crystal room. This was simply because they were there a little too long. Gabriel has a question. He says he brought a crystal one time to the crystal room and he wants to know if you have uh, access to that information I guess he wants you to guess which one it was or something he wants to know if you know which crystal he, he brought yes let me explain something within the crystal room as you enter each door there is a cumulative very deliberate structure of large crystals now, as you move throughout that room, you pass several structures of these crystals. Now, there is light shine from underneath. So if you can imagine, the room is essentially dark. But for this light that is shining below the structures of the crystals, the color is of importance. Of course, the stone is of importance also. So, as the humans come to the crystal room, because of the colour distortion, it is not a lack of the human that they do not understand why they are enlightened in this way. It is fine. 
But as you move around the outskirts of the room, you're exposing yourself to different energies for different purposes in different sequences. The time in which you stay is also very important. Some only need to visit for a very short stay, be exposed to one or two structures and then they're removed. Others have been allowed to wander at will. Touch the crystal. Now, Gabriel, the crystal that you bought, my friend, and where you left it, may I tell you, it is in the same place. It is amongst the purple crystal colours. It remains there. Is that enough? I'm not oh, sure. Right. I'm thinking that he brought a crop because he was wanting to know which one it was. Amethyst. It is with the amethyst. Amethyst. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We're starting We're to starting get some to get more, get questions more questions coming in. Come in. This one's from Sarah. It's a bit more complicated. She she had a complex dream uh, some time ago. Mm -hmm. And inside this dream, she was walking down a path, and um, she met these two dancing beings, this man and a woman uh, dancing beings. And what these... Uh, they were kind of like a martial arts couple kind of dance thing. And um, she would like to know if you have any extra information uh, about those two dancers in that dream and part of the message that they were trying to uh, express because... representation, yes. Yeah, because the way they danced, they, um, they danced the person's soul that was watching them. And they, they put out this great expression. And um, she's yeah. wanting to know more about that, if you can uh, give your, your take of that, that information. Yes. The martial arts idea, what you call the martial arts, they're very deliberate movements. As far as dance goes, there would have been a dance represented to her of attacker or defender, either or. Now, they may have been, appeared to be loving, yet as you interact with your martial arts, you are actually in combat. So it's reflecting conflict, conflict in what she was viewing. What was this? Was this actually something that aired on the side of violence? Was this practice of their martial arts? Or was this an intimate idea of two humans relating physically with energy. Now I would say to Sarah that in this instance what she was viewing was a dance of martial arts as she puts it but the fact that it contained the martial arts idea there's some conflict for her around her ability to dance with a partner. Now, it might be synchronistic. It might appear on the surface to be very deliberate and respectful. Your martial arts are, but it is a reflection of intimacy for her. I would say to her, let herself, once again, let herself go with the idea of her dancing with her lover. Allow it to be the romantic, seductive and sensual experience that it may in her mind. As she imagines the idea, she thinks of it. She feels it. She humans express it. Lift off those martial arts outfits. Take them off what is underneath and do a different dance. I will show you this trick. Andy, you talk about romance and romantic liaisons. Um, are you able to 
have these on board the ship with your fellow Canadians? Differently to you. Yes, we may. Would you like to describe a little bit more about that? Yes. Essentially, between us, each other, romance is what you would call a cocktail, cocktail of risque sharing of energies. Because we have so much energy that resides with it in our bodies, you can imagine being humans built very similar. He said there's much energy in this area. To integrate that with another hmm, doesn't happen very often. But this is one thing that the humans do do. And if one was to dance with us, then it would be a completely different experience, of course. There would be a transference of energy rather than a clash of energy. Now, we may practice this, of course. It is our choice. Again, I tell you, we have free time. I enjoy studying the romance of the humans. Now, it is not something that I have yet experienced with another on my ship, another on my planet. But I look to the humans and the delight that they share in this feeling, in this vibration. The attraction is great. So, amongst our own species, a connection, an interaction of such, it takes much practice. It takes more than your black belts in martial arts. It's not often done before we are elderly. With the humans, it seems to be something that starts fairly young. You have your childhood crushes. How romantic. It's lovely. So yes, if you'd like to know the reason that I am attracted to humans, it's because I may have interactions like that with them. Many of the Palladians on my ship feel exactly the same way. When a human comes to visit on the ship, my goodness. It is as if one of your celebrities is visiting one of you. The females adore the human men. Males adore the human women. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. Um, Makiko wants to ask, if people fantasized about other people, do the does the fantasized person feel that energy? <laughs> My friend, you are so on the right track. Yes, yes, and it does not always have to be shared intention either. Your fantasy, may I assume it to be a sensual and sexual one? The one that you fantasize about, if your energy is strong enough, if your fantasy encompasses your entire body and your vibration puts off in your auric field this wonderful attraction that you have to this being or whatever it is that you fantasize about, oh yes, it will reach. And it is actually, in fact, the form of manifesting. Does that answer the question? Uh, Mikiko says yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy. Oh, you're welcome. Fantasize, Mikiko, fantasize. I have some more questions from uh, the uh, events page. Um, a member uh, says her name is Rabia. She wants to ask about her life journey and is it going in the right direction? Are there any messages for her? And she wants to know if you can tell what star seeds that she might be from. 
So her her name is Rabia, but her chat name is uh, Sophia Love. So I don't know which way you need to uh, connect yes. through that, but those are the names that uh, that I have at the minute. Yes, please break down the questions, Dan. Uh, the question was, um, she wants to know about her life journey, if it's going in the right direction. Always. Yes. And then, and then she wanted to know if there were any messages for her, or if you could tell, or and if you could tell what star seeds she might be from. Is she asking in this incarnation, or is she referencing her ancient heritage? I believe she's asking for this incarnation, what her ties are to the star seeds uh, from this one, uh, near as I can tell. Yes. I understand the question. I understand the need to have this information by the humans. I wonder how it would serve her, though. Okay. I will give you the answer for her. In her case, interestingly enough, she has Palladian connections. Now, how does this change things for her? How does this change her journey? It doesn't. It's just a bit of idle information. I do not wish to seem insulting. I would like her to simply appreciate the fact that she is human, she is on the planet. She has the choice to make the most of it. Now, where the seeds began, we all have seeds, of course. You may call them seeds. There are so many words in the galaxies for this idea. It really serves no purpose. But she is always on the correct path, as she puts it. No one is sitting in judgment of her other than herself. That too is her choice. If she is able to let that go and enjoy this amazing three-dimensional ability that you humans have to build relationships between each other and be intimate and feel deeply with everything you are, this ability this ability is something that we desire. So please let her know she is a human with gifts because she is simply human. So proceedings, her origins, respectfully, don't bother yourself with those. Once okay. Again, thank you. Yes, Dan. Thank you. I would just like to say once again, the dance of love. The dance of love. If there is one thing that I may leave you with, it is this. Create the dance of love. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Another question from Michelle. She's curious to know what her highest interest is. If she'd like to know if it is in her highest interest to stay single and focus on spiritual growth, or I guess uh, what she's not saying is the alternative is to uh, focus on interactions and experience romance and all those other. So should she uh, focus on her spiritual growth or? Uh, focus more on romance or what would you recommend uh, for her maybe there's a middle road I don't know what what might you recommend for uh, for Michelle must she choose you know I, the other? yeah I'm not sure why um, but Michelle. For, she's got it in, yes yeah, I think she's got in her mind that she needs to stay single in order to have her spiritual growth. Maybe she's not found a spiritual mate yet. I don't know. 
I'm not sure. So any anything that you can uh, help her out with there would be awesome. He is a very sensual and sexual being. She has no problem attracting the males in her life. So if she chooses to be single, of course, then she's the one who's made the choice because she does not see romance as part of her spiritual growth. She doesn't see intimacy as part of her spiritual growth. If she has had enough of that for this period of time and she needs to sit back, take a step back from that idea of the humankind, respect it. Please make sure she returns back to the dance of love at the point where she is ready and she will know this lady attracts men like flies hmm. I wonder if she'd like to come up to the ship perhaps she may <laughs> yeah. I have one more question from uh, from the page from uh, Kyle Kyle Slaughter says hello he's in Michigan he says there was a flying saucer that came over to him and his friend when they were riding bikes in his neighborhood about 10 years ago when he was about 14 mm. said it came and said hi and was hovering right over right over them mm -hmm. he says he's asking is it possible to know who was in that ship and why they came and he would love to visit the crystal room he says so any information any information on that sighting that uh, that Kyle and his his friends experienced yes can he, can he let you know the size well relatively to himself the size of the saucer can he share that with me I'm not certain he's not in real time with me he's posted the question on the events page Okay. Uh, so, so I can I can I can let you know what the probability is. Okay. It very likely was a yeah, yellow uh, a gray somewhere within that realm. Yes, because there was much activity around that time. And there were smaller ships at that time too. They were able to be noticed without too much shock, without too much backlash. So roughly around 10 years of your time, I would say yes, Grace, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, in room here, we have our friend Shron. She, uh, she has a question. Shron. Oh, Shron. Shron. Yes, my darling. Hello. Hello, Shron. Hello. Um, I would love to go to the Crystal Room. Um, I would love to come up in Dream State on a ship. Um, and uh, another friend of mine as well, his name is Brian, and he mentioned that as well, that he would really enjoy that. Um, yes. Pardon me? Thank you for making the request to come to the Crystal Room show. And yes, if you are able to astral travel when you call upon the reward absolutely embellish your recitation. Be prepared. Be prepared to be treated like royalty as you venture on the ship. It is very much like the experience, as I said before, as your celebrity is walking through one of your vast hallways. And imagine the attraction and imagine the desire to view and feel and be close to that amazing energy that you have. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. You are welcome to come and visit and your friend Brian. And Yes, I will pass on your request to visit the crystal room. Love it. You, Sean, you will love it. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. <clears throat> and I also had another uh, small 3D question. Um, my husband wanted to know um, if we're going to find our dog soon. We just lost her last night, so she's running around somewhere. Somebody has it. Do you have any insight? Dog. 
Yes. Your dog, your your pet. Yes, my pet. Yes. Someone has found the dog. They will make an effort to try to find the owner. So be be assured that that will happen. It depends how traceable this particular dog is back to its owner. It's safe. I assume so. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Much love. Um, just to follow up there, um, Kyle was talking about the UFO he saw. Um, there's been a reply. He said it's about it was about 30 feet across. Yes. It had three white lights in the form of a triangle. Yes. Does that give you white lights? Idea? Yes, white lights. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Grace. Harmless. Just curious. What type of grey? Small grey. Zeta, zeta gray? It's difficult to say at that time. The shape of the ship tells me that it's a small gray. But there are several species within the gray idea. So it's, it's difficult to say without addressing a gray themselves. Did they present to him? Um, unfortunately, he's not in real time, so we're unable to ask him. Mm. Yes. I can only speak to the likelihood of what it was. There was ten, ten years of your time ago, it, there was a very different alien experience going on around your planet compared to what it is now. It is vastly vastly different in technology. Even alien technology has improved in that time vastly, just as yours has. So it would be like saying to me in, in, in reverse, if I had seen a car carrying some humans in it and you ask me what, what kind of humans were they and I did not see the humans, I can only speak to the likelihood. Perhaps it may have been one of your Asian species. Perhaps it may have been Caucasian. Do you see my point? So I can only say yes, small greys. Likely. I will go if there's no more questions. There is somebody else who I believe would like to come and visit. We have one more question from uh, from Roxy. If you could uh, take her question just real quick before you go, then we can uh, change entity Absolutely. if it's okay. Absolutely. Hey, sweetie, it's Roxanne. How are you? Yes, Roxanne. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Or mm -hmm. wonderful. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> When you were speaking about astral projecting to your ship and then you said it again a little bit later about coming board to visit the ship, I got my two synchronistic numbers through a modality I use and so am I coming or how, um, yeah that happened for a reason and I'm having difficulty asking the question but there seems to be a visitation in order for a purpose of maybe what I'm trying to let's say learn about unconscious channeling and maybe I can come there I don't know do you have anything on that just scan yeah. me and you'll get something yes my <laughs> darling absolutely you on the ship my friend Oof. yes please come the invitation is most definitely made and yes your conclusion is correct okay that that did feel right. And yeah, and, and I'm very romantic, so I know we'll have a good time. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Oh, I will greet you. Oh, yes. Wonderful. 
All right then, yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very well. Love you. Bye. No and do as you um as you trade out uh beings there. Uh can we also give uh, Kim an opportunity to have a uh, a drink of liquid? Mm hmm. Yes, thank you. There is okay, another perfect. question to come. I'll okay. bring it up briefly so she may drink. Mm -hmm. Much love, my dear, dear humans. Namaste, Andy. Thank Until you very much. we meet again, yes. Namaste. Namaste, Andy. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi Kim, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a true blessing. You're awesome. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. I've got someone else knocking if we've got time. Yeah, What's yeah, that? What yeah, is it? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. More the merrier. Oh, yes. Mm. Ah, ah, hi, hi, right? Oh, the bodies. Mm, Grindle. <laughs> Hello, Grindle. How are you? Ah, is that you, Dan? It is me, Dan. Yes, it oh, is. Dan, these bodies. How do you do it? Well. I don't know. I eat a lot. I stay well grounded. <laughs> I have more room in my body than you have in yours. So I do it that way. I stay comfy. I'll squishy. Yeah, stay. Yeah, yeah. You guys got to do something about the tails. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should visit me sometime and then you'll see how it's different. Maybe you'll like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I come. I, I, I just came in. To just say, hey, you guys, don't be so serious. Just, just you know, stop with the crap. Yeah. Right. Uh, Grendel with the lighten up message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not being mansy pansy. Jesus, this body. Uh, yeah, no. Get real, guys. You know what's going on. We know what's going on. Mix it up. Do you have it? Do you have any special message for the group for Hukalo? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Hukalos. Yeah, yeah. I love you guys. Yeah. I can say it now. Doesn't make me feel so sick anymore. <laughs> hey. Lighten up, guys, you know? Flower power, all that stuff, you know, you guys, you, you, you all live through that shit. Yeah. So just let it go, let it be. Get rid of the bullshit. Find what's your reality. Jump on board and ride it. Where's your goddamn tails? That's it. Not anymore? No, I think we're good, Grindel. Thank you so much for coming and enlightening us with that, that great message. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you for letting me come again. Mm. Blessings. Blessings to you, Grindel. Mm. You too, Dan. You too, Dan. Well, I'll come check out the body thing, okay? Kind of yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one, this is not good. Don't, don't like this one. Don't like female bodies, though. Is that what it is? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi. Can you help me out with this body? I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Mine's a little bigger. If you want to try it out, that's all I can tell you. So I'll I'll, I'll check in with him. Hey. Okay. All right. That'll work too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Flower power, guys. Flower power. Bless you. See you later. Yeah. Much love and all that stuff. I'll I'll bring bring it back now. Like half. <laughs> hey, welcome back hey. to Earth. Give it up. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Grindle just happened. Yeah. Hi, baby. He, he... <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. Oh my God, you're not there. God bless him. I love him. I love him, but I don't you know I love him that much. <laughs> Just hilarious. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, hmm. <laughs> I hope you enjoy, guys. I feel completely different to what the webinars usually leave me feeling. So. This one, I'm going to be really curious watching back, but <laughs> thank you for being here, and I love you all. Um, Maxwell, are you ready? Yeah, Max, Max, you're being called out. Are you nearby? Maybe in the latrine getting ready. Who knows? Maybe. I really just... Did I just Leslie. really say latrine? I'm sorry. You did. You totally <laughs> <In the> public <laughs> chat. <laughs> public chat. Yeah. I need to use the latrine. <laughs> and happy Anyways. belated birthday again, Kim. Pardon, Trump? I said happy belated birthday again. Oh. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. that reminds me. Today's High Ann's birthday. Yes. Oh, happy birthday, High Ann. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that. Awesome. We're all getting younger. <laughs> and shout out to the people meeting up in the Hukolo Sweden group. Some people are flying off to Sweden in a week to meet up. Yeah, that's right. Up. So big respect wow. for that. Awesome. That is brilliant, guys. I love that idea. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So who is Guys, it? It's Gab and Hayan. Hayan. Jasmina. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome. That's good. So, human colonies calling Max. Please come in, Max. Hi. Nanu, Nanu. <laughs> no, 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 that was great. Awesome, come in, awesome. Awesome, come uh, calling your fatitude. Will Robinson. I'm showing my Asia. Oh. Remember the robot? Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Yes, that's right. Danger, danger. <laughs> yes, that would be our generation, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh God! Hey, Rox, do you want to weigh in with anything while we've got time? Um, I just I really love the romance thing. You know, that was really that was really fun from the channeling. 
I think we maybe discount uh, <clears throat> what I see sometimes in relationships. Relationships become an idea of of working. You have to like work at your marriage or work at your relationship. When, but if it's full of love and romance, there's no work. It's just two entities being one flowing through the now. So, mm -hmm. I think her focus on being that romance was uh, uh, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it really yeah. is. Let's say a nice focus. It's you know obviously not an obligation, but if you choose to dance in that area, I think it would be most beneficial because. God, it just feels so good. It just takes away things. You're like, everything that you think is so important, then all of a sudden your lover comes along and you're like, okay, hi. And then, and then everything disappears, you know? So I think that was really good. That's good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm really glad he came through that way. Oh, Wait, yeah. Let, the more right I this. channel him, mm -hmm. he, he's absolutely enamored. With humans, like he just he cannot get enough of humans, and you know, he, he, it is the fascination of the sensuality and the sexual side, you know, and he loves to dance. Like honestly, he keeps right. it real. And he, he he just he just moves through what he does, and then after his work is done, the rest of the time he's he's studying us, he's watching uh -huh. us and how we interact, and he's. He's just, oh wow, yeah, it right. just makes me feel so, it's almost a feminine thing, it's it's like so seductive, he's amazing, amazing. It would be nice to be romanced by him, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, mighty energy. easy girl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Rowley, you're so funny. <laughs> Do you want to um, just just let everybody know in Human Colonies and World yeah. Wide Web um, how you started your interaction with Endu because he was your first yeah, channel. Yeah, he was, he was my first channel. Uh, we were having interaction, just it was so random. And I was being asked things just about day-to-day -day things. I felt like I was I was teaching something, really random stuff, like, you know, what's this called? Oh, it's a washing machine. What do you use a washing machine for? Oh, well, you go ahead and you wash your clothes. Why do you wash your clothes? You know, it was this endless, like a, like a toddler. Question. Like a toddler asking a hundred yeah. questions, yeah. That's how, that's how my relationship with him started. And I didn't know it was him at that point. I, it, it, it felt to me like it was a classroom, and and then it started to turn into me addressing the the group directly, um, and the teacher had been removed. So I spoke to Takur around that time, and Takur confirmed that I was teaching and this other you know stuff was going on, and I thought, wow, that's you know really cool. Anyway, I had this experience where I had the sensation that he wanted wanted to come through and he wanted to channel. And uh, I was a little bit hesitant at first, even though as much as I wanted to be a channeler, um, I was a little bit hesitant when I was faced with it. Anyway, <laughs> the first time I was laying down on my bed, the first time I said to him, okay, let's give this a go. And we agreed. And... He, <laughs> he's trying to come in, and I, I look like I was having a seizure. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. Oh, like this, oh, on bed, and I was, I felt completely safe. I really did. I just thought, well, this isn't working, so let's just let's just leave it for now. And then I don't know, maybe a week or two later, I thought, mm, try again. So I did the same thing. I lay down on the bed again. Damn, seizure things going on. And my daughter <laughs> walks into the room, poor kid, grabs the laptop off me and says, Mom, snap out of it. Of course, Edu went like that. He was gone. And I was almost disappointed. <laughs> so, oh, I'm so sorry. And so, of course, that, that showed the need that I needed to have a conversation with her. But I wanted to know what on earth was going on. Why was it happening like this? So 
I spoke with Jim, wonderful, awesome Jim, and he said to me, he wants to come in via my throat. And I, that hadn't even occurred to me. And once I allowed that, and we cooperated that way, it was really successful and really pleasant and, and easy. And I don't know, that was a real learning curve for me. And sometimes when other people ask me questions about how I've come to channeling, and I share that because it's something that I guess mainstream population wouldn't think much about. And you, you, you think about channelers and you, you kind of sort of think of spirit and it's all happening up here through the head crown chakra and all that kind of stuff. And I was shocked about the throat idea, but yeah, I mean, it's something to consider if you're looking to channel and, and um, you are struggling a little bit with that kind of experience physically, then just explore other ideas, ask people who are channeling now um, for feedback and they may be able to tell you exactly what it is you need to let it flow. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, typically I may have been told I was blocking. And because of my experience, I'm, I do not advocate the idea of blocking at all. I don't believe that it happens. I believe, I believe there just needs to be an understanding. And that's just my experience with all, all the beings that I, I channel. You understand each other, you respect each other. Andrew will always leave my presence with his hands to his face and he will walk backwards. He does not turn his back to me. He will walk backwards and he will bow. It's so beautiful. And being allowed to see those kinds of things and building relationships with them where you have that reciprocation of respect and love. It's just beautiful. The G in the beginning was hysterical. <laughs> anyway, I think Max is with us. Hello. Yes, Max is here now. Hey, Max. Oh, you got your tie-dye on. Nice. 